We began a series last week, and we, we simply call it Make It Fun. Everybody say Make It Fun. Make it fun. Come on, say it again, Make It Fun. Make it fun. Everybody say Self. Self. Make, it fun. make It Fun. Look at your neighbor and say, let's make it fun. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, we're going to read from verse 15. Probably every week we will actually read this during this series because it kind of sets the tone for everything that we're focusing on. And here's what it says. It says, I recommend having fun. This is the Bible I'm reading from. I recommend having fun because there is nothing better. There is nothing better. Everybody shout, nothing better. better. Say it again, "Nothing nothing better. There's nothing better for people in this world than to eat and to drink and enjoy life. And that way, they will experience some happiness along with all of the hard work that God gives them under the sun. So the writer here is saying to us, there's nothing better for us than having fun while we have a go at life. Nothing better than having fun for in our marriage. There's nothing better than having fun in our homes. Nothing better than having fun in our families. And I, I'd like everyone to just say right, right now with me, they're in uh, Bellevue over in DuPont. Online campus, hope you like really lean in today. And everybody here in Tacoma, say my heart's open. My heart's open. And I receive, I receive everything, everything that, I that I hear today from God's Word. Make me better, God. In Jesus' name. Sheila and I went a few years ago to, we were in, invited as special guests to the presidential inauguration, and there were these after parties uh, where you just kind of went to different places after our president uh, inauguration happened. And we were a few feet from Cheryl Crow as she belted out the song, all I want to do is have some fun. And I got a feeling. Oh, come on. I know y'all, all y'all looking like I'm a Christian. I don't know those songs. Pastor. I got a feeling. I'm pretty sure that everybody wants to have fun. I'm pretty sure that we all have something in us, an affinity for fun in our life, something that God put in us to enjoy having fun. And this series that we're in right now is about adding joy to the journey. And I just think God's people ought to be having fun. Now, I don't quite agree with Cheryl that all I want to do is have fun. That, that kind of leads to a, a not a good, you, actually, if that's all you want to do, pretty soon you won't be having any fun. But I, I do believe that as God's people, that we ought to be having fun while we're working hard, while we're going to school, while we're raising kids, while we're having a family. I just think we ought to be ambitious, intentional, unashamed, fun-loving people. And I think it ought to be that way for us 24-7, um, that, that we are leaning in to opportunities to not only experience the fun, but to bring the fun. When we come to church, not just come expecting the band, like to bring the joy and the music, and the, but, 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 you know, or other people to bring the joy, but to actually all of us bring our smiles and all of us bring our own thanksgiving. And all of us bring our own encouragement and our own praise. Psalm 104, the psalmist says, when I go to church, I I enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
And I come in to the courts of God with praise. And I give thanks to Him and I praise Him. What a great, what a great way to look. What a great word picture of coming into the house of God, not with heavy burdened kind of attitude and like, I hope, you know, you appreciate this God, Pastor. I made it. I am here. <laughs> sometimes I think about, sometimes I think about how I wish that all of you could be up here and look out at your faces. <laughs> no, serious, like I just wish. Because I, I know in my mind that, that some of you, not all of you, but if some of you were seeing on my face what I see on your face, you wouldn't come back to church. You'd say, I want, to find, I want to find a pastor who's like at least smiles a little bit. But I really think that we're unconscious oftentimes of the message we're sending with our face. Would you agree? I'm, I know I am. I know I am. A lot of times, like, I, I, need, I need Sheila to remind me. I need somebody to elbow me. I need some, some kind of like, man, like, 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 are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. But my face is sending a different signal than is in my heart. And, 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 and I want to remind everyone and, and that, that, that we're all responsible for our own face. <laughs> like, like, like we're, we're responsible for what's right here. And you can't control somebody else's face, but we can all control our own, right? And, and, and the reason that's important is if you're sending out frowns, guess what you're going to get back? Come on, if you're sending out do not disturb looks, guess what you're going to get back? I hope you're happy with your lonely life if you're sending out messages with your face that is basically saying, I'm good, leave me alone, don't be talking to me. I hope you're happy lonely because that's what your future is all about. But if you will lighten up, come on, if you will smile. And you know what? It's not just that way with one another. It really is that way with God. That, that when we pray, when the praises go up, come on, the presence of God comes down. Come on, when thanksgiving goes up, the joy of the Lord fills our heart. Amen? When we say, God, I thank you for everything you've done this week, heaven says, you know what? I can't wait to do that, that again for you next week because you are thankful and you appreciate and you are rejoicing and you are celebrating because what goes out is what comes back. Amen? So I'm just beckoning our church um, in this season right now. Let, let's, let's make sure that we realize that, that we are capable of coming to church with joy, serving our city with joy, serving each other with joy. This is, this is the month where we're out taking it to the streets. And I just hope that the community and the city and every hospital we go to and every home we visit and every neighborhood we clean up and, and every person that we help, I just hope that when we're gone, they're saying stuff like, man, those people made my day. Like those people that came here and visited me today, they really lifted me. They really encouraged me. They really were a blessing in my life. That's what I hope happens because Jesus has commissioned us. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little preach in me right now, but I'm, a, I'm just, Jesus, Jesus looked at us and said, you are the light of the world. He didn't say you are the darkness, go in, turn off all the light and, and make everybody feel bad about who they are and the life. No, he said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. In other words, get out there and brighten things up, amen? So let me, let me really today hone in on the idea that I want to encourage you to give yourself permission to have joy in your life and to make life fun. Just giving yourself permission 
And, and, and my goal really is on this weekend is to, to free up the fun in you. Because there's a laugh in you. Even if nobody's heard it for a while. I said there's a laugh in you. There's a smile for your face. <laughs> and the people around you will thank you if you free it up. There's a song. There's a song in you. I know you may not be able to sing really good, but there's a song in you. Funny, somebody told me they, uh, the writer who wrote this song, his name's Joel Houston, and he wrote this song, and they're like, they were in a little interview thing with him, and, and they said, why did you do the oh, oh, He said, because we ran out of words. <laughs> and you know what he was doing? He was actually making that session fun. Uh, in that songwriter session. He was just being lighthearted. But the truth is, is that, okay, you can't sing. You can go, oh. I'm just telling you, there's a oh in you. There's a joy in you. There's a, there's a freedom in you. Come on, there's a strength in you. There's a smile in you. But, but we have to give ourselves permission to make life fun. And, and here's some reasons why we give ourselves permission to have fun. Number one is that God wants us to have fun. He wants us to have fun. Look at this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 says, one final word, friends, is we ask you, no, we urge you is more like it. We urge you that you keep on doing what we told you to do to please God, not in a dogged religious plod, but in a living, spirited dance. Not in a dogged religious plod. So basically what he's telling us, is that, you know, all the stuff we tell you to do to serve God well and that the Bible teaches us and how to live. Like now he's saying, you know, just, just do that. But, but one more thing is don't do it in a dogged religious plot. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen Christian who they, 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 they were doing the right thing? Like, but, but it's just with this religious kind of, it's like painful to watch them. Like this agony, it's heavy, it, and, you know, and you get in their airspace, and it's just so hard, life's so hard, and, and you know, I've been praying for God to do something, I don't know why God doesn't do anything, uh, and you ever been around like that, heavy, complaining, kind of, and you know what, you, you, you almost think to yourself, like, if, if I were not a Christian, I wouldn't want to be one if I hung around with you, because it's the dogged religious plot. And a lot of people go to church that way. They just go out of obligation. They come to Champion Center. A lot of people come to Champion Center like out of obligation. And then that's why, again, like when I'm up here and I'm speaking, and most speakers will do this. This is not just, just me. But I, I look through the crowd, and if I find a friendly face, I, I, I grab it. Like, that's what, I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to look, uh, like, if, if this section, can y'all give me a little love, like right now, a little love, or like, like right here, a little love. Like, like, so so I, find, I find a group of people and give me a little, like, nah, a little smile, and, like, I, I could just, like, be over here, dress y'all, do whatever, but I, I'm, I'm going to go this direction, right? Why? Because we're all, we all don't want the dog religious plot. I don't want to talk to people that just showed up here because they had to obligated to. Now, if you think that's just me, um, let, 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 let me just say this, like, if you're a parent and you tell your, you say to your son or your daughter, go clean up your room, or go sweep the driveway, sidewalk, and if they're like, oh, do I have to? Yeah, yeah. And they go off and they're like kind of pouting the whole way, but they do it. Like, come on, every parent, wouldn't you prefer if your son and daughter, when you told them to clean up the room, if they wouldn't pout about it? Like if they would just go do it? 
and even do it with a little music maybe or something like in a, in a spirited dance, like wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, like you want to go get an, you want to go take them for an ice cream or something, like right? Like you're going, I love your attitude, son, like, right? Well, God, well, why would God be any different? Why would our heavenly father be any different than, than when we're like, okay, I hope you like this. I, I hope you're good with it. It's not nearly as good for God as when we enter the gates with thanksgiving. As when we come in and we say, you know what? It's a privilege to be a child of God. It's a privilege to be in the house of God. Okay, take it a little bit further. I don't know if I'll get through all my message today, but take it a little bit further. And, and, and th that is that if that, if you have a child who like does what I just gave you, the example, like what you want to do is you want to tell, you want to look at that child and you want to say, listen, you wouldn't even have a room to clean up if I didn't provide it for you, okay? I, am I right? You're like, <laughs> so I'm just saying, let's keep remembering we have an awesome heavenly father. We have a God who's provided every good thing for us. And, and so, like, when it comes to giving, for example, a lot of people hear the teaching of giving, and at first we're like, I don't think I have to do that. I don't think God wants me to do that. Like, and then the scriptures are what they are. And so you, okay, I guess I got to be obedient. And then, so we start to give to God, right? Yeah. And, and we start down the road, and maybe we even get to the level of tithing and, and giving like that and becoming generous with God. But there's another level is what I'm trying to tell you about than just being obedient. And if right now, like if we're, I'm, I'm thankful for every person who is obedient. God bless you that you make it, you, ma you make out the check, you go online, you contribute, God bless you. But I'm just going to tell you there's another level. And the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. God loves people who make it fun. Amen? Come on, God makes, God loves people who make it fun when we're doing the things that he's told us to do that we're obligated to, because we understand, like a parent who would tell their kids, like, listen, I fill up the refrigerator for you with food. The least you can do is go sweep the sidewalk. You live here. I could send you away. You have no home. <laughs> like, 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 I just think, put all that into, and when, we're, when you just think about it that way, it just makes it a privilege to be able to honor the Lord with our wealth and be able to give to God from what He's given to us and to do it with an attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. Amen? Amen. Everybody shout, make it fun. Okay, secondly, Jesus had fun. I told you I was gonna, I promised you last week I was gonna talk a little bit about this because most people think of Jesus only as a sad, serious, heavy burdened person. But the people who actually hung around with Jesus and were doing life with him, saw him differently than that. So a lot of times we're like, he was a man of sorrow, he was acquainted with grief, and that's scripture in the Bible. But unfortunately, a lot of people have only framed Jesus to be like that. Like, like we, I don't know if I should say this or not. I'm gonna say it. But, I just don't want to reflect negativity on anybody, but we had a guest with us who I was interviewing a few years ago, uh, who's a movie star, and I was interviewing them in our church. And some of you may remember that they came from a, a, a religious background where at Easter time, everything was about the cross. And our church was, wasn't quite heavy enough for him. And so when I, would interview, when I was interviewing him over the weekend, he, he, he spilled that. He's like, we got to understand what Jesus did. And he was wanting everyone to basically lament, 
sackcloth and ashes and all that. And finally, in one of the services, I was trying to navigate it all. Some of you were there. One of the services, I just kind of, I just said to him in real kindness, like, hey man, I know like the cross was a huge sacrifice for you. And we all know that, but there was a resurrection too. Like Jesus rose on the third day. So, <laughs> so, 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 so my point is that a lot of times we put Jesus only in the sorrow and we put him only in the grief. And, and the reality was that the people, the crowd around him saw him actually sometimes, the religious people saw him as too much of a fun guy. Like he's hanging out with publicans and sinners, politicians. Shouldn't be doing that. Sinners. No. No. And he's a he's also he's a wine bibber. That's what he is. He's a wine bibber. He's socializing. Jesus. What they were actually seeing was this part of Jesus that if if he were in our community today, he would be walking into Starbucks, pulling up a chair saying, hey, what's up? How you guys doing it? He would be greeting people, touching people, smiling at people, bringing help to people, bringing hope to people. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? That idea about Jesus, that he's only a man of sorrow and grief is one that we got to free ourselves from. In fact, Jesus' parables were laced with humor, references, and so forth to fun. One of them was, we call it, call it the prodigal son uh, parable. And, and it's the story where a son has left his father, wandered out on his own, got caught up in crazy living, ran out of money, and comes back home. Jesus told this story, and, and what, he, what he conveyed is that when the son came back and said, Father, please forgive me for the way I've lived, the, the father basically, like just in that moment, he like said, party on, like this is party time. He ordered for the fatted calf to be killed. He ordered for them to come out with the band. Let's strike up the music. Like my son who was lost is now found. And, and he's creating imagery. Do you understand what I'm saying? Imagery around, around celebration. Another one is where he told a parable about the kingdom of God. And he, t he said, let's go out to the, to the highways. Let's take it to the streets and let's call people in to the house of God, but, but he equated the kingdom of God as a banquet with feasting. Like that, that was the imagery. And, and so he was always conveying the idea of fun and joy and, and engaging life with an attitude of celebration, not one of sorrow and heaviness and being burdened down. In fact, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you that are heavy in spirit. And he was literally talking to religious mindset. Come to me if you're heavy in spirit. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Aren't you glad for, for Jesus having that kind of a contagious attitude of joy? A third thing is to just remind you that fun is meant to be a big part of our salvation experience. So the Bible says in Psalms 20, it says, may we shout for joy over your salvation. And in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. So shout, everybody say shout for joy. Shout for joy. Come on, say it again, shout for joy. Shout for joy. That's so different and in great contrast to a real lowly, quiet, like funeral sort of setting. It's a celebration. It's making salvation fun. Everybody shout, make it fun. Make it fun. We had, I, I, around, we've had around 900, I got a report this week, 900 salvations at Champion Center since January. We've had about 900... Yeah, come on. And that's what we want to be. We want to be this kind of house. We want to stay this kind of house. We always want to celebrate new beginnings. We always want to celebrate the victories, the progress, the growth, the life in the house of God. Number four, 
giving yourself permission to make it fun. Number four is fun makes hard times bearable. So let me ask you a question. Have you ever said, or have you heard someone say, after laughing, have you heard someone say, I needed that? I needed that. I think most of us have said that and heard others say it. And what that is, is it's a reference to the fact that fun makes life more bearable. The harder life is, the more important it is to laugh. President Lincoln was criticized during the Civil War for having his closest advisors and team to gather around in the evenings around the campfire and tell jokes and laugh together. I don't know, Pony Express or whatever, they took notes and ran, rode the horse into town and it pumped out in the newspaper. I'm not sure how, I guess Pony Express was male, so I don't really know, but uh, anyway, he got criticized and it spread across the land with headlines, you know, president laughing in war times and things like that. His critics just said it was inappropriate. But President Lincoln refused to change. And, and he said this, he said, the good book says that laughter does good like a medicine. President Lincoln was never, he would never hide the idea that he was by nature melancholy. So what he said not just then, but through his whole adult life, is that he needed humor. He desperately needed laughter. He knew himself well enough to know that he could not have his best life, and he couldn't be a good servant, a public servant, to those around him if there wasn't some fun factored in to his life. And, and my hope is that if life is hard for you, that you will not like say, Pastor Kevin, I just don't get this. Like if you had my life and you were dealing with what I'm dealing with, and, and you know, kind of turn me, turn the volume down on this series and and just say, okay, I'm gonna wait for the next series. I like your other messages better. I, I hope you, I just hope you don't do that because this literally could be the one for you. This literally could be the one where if you have those inward battles and you know better than anyone else, no, no shame on you. I'm not trying to say you don't have the right personality or you're, you're, you're not as good as someone who is more natural, naturally free with joy. In fact, I'm saying the opposite to you. I'm reminding you that the joy of the Lord is actually your strength. And, and I'm reminding you that when life gets tough, those are the times to lean in and, and, and to be intentional in every way that you can to lighten up, to lighten up your soul. Come on, lighten up your spirit. And lastly, the reason why I would want you to give yourself permission is because fun makes work enjoyable and we get more done. Some people are not having fun because they see fun as a waste of time. And, and, and to be fair about it, I think many people grow up with a father who was the same way, maybe. And, and he instills it in his kids. And this is Father's Day weekend, so maybe to dads this would be some gold that we could all walk away with this weekend. 
that sometimes fathers are so militant that they, they, they mean well. Like we want, our, we want our kids to do well in life and so work ethic, work ethic, work ethic. And we just pound away. And we get so much on that side of, of the value that we convey a message that going, going to get an ice cream with you is a waste of time. Now we may not say that, but going in to the ball game is, is, is a waste of time. Like the thing, the only thing we emphasize that matters, if we're not careful, it could have been downloaded from previous generations, but we have that mindset, and here's the real liberating knowledge connected to this today, and that is that the facts are in. And that idea is absolutely not true. The facts are that if people are having more fun, they're actually going to work harder, stay longer, maintain their composure better, have more, in, more, have more energy. If people are having fun, they're going to get along better together. There's going to be a higher morale, which all translates into higher productivity. I came across a book recently. It's called The Levity Effect, and this is what it's about. And it's basically, it's not a Christian book. It's just a book full of examples and scientific research on the power of humor and fun in the workplace. And what the word levity means actually is light, the power of light. And so sometimes we just get it wrong in parenting, at work, in our overseeing positions. We get it wrong because we're so, we get, we, we think intensity and we get tension flowing. Tension is in us, tension is on us. And, and you know, we're bossy and we're pushy and we're, and we're not smiling and we're, we're thinking that's the right thing. And I, again, I'm hoping that, that I can just help you and serve you well this weekend to say to you that the facts are in that the most productive life is a life that has some fun going on. The, the, the healthiest life, the, 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 the life that actually is, is doing more is the life that there's is moments of, of, of laughing and days full of smiles. And it doesn't mean we don't work hard. In fact, it empowers us to actually work better and be better in all that we do. So when you think of this in context for us as a church, coming back around to that, is that God's given us a work to do. We have a part to play in God's great plan. Church family, I want to tell you, we're, we're called, I said we're called to a higher purpose. And we have a mission to accomplish. What, what we're doing and what we're called to do is of eternal value. It has huge implications. The Bible teaches us whatever we do, do it with all of your heart is unto the Lord. And every day should be, we should wake up and say, God, thank you for the gift of life today. And, and Lord, help me to make it count for you. So, so in that context of this mission, we're in a battle. There's a battle going on. There's a war that is taking place for our souls and the souls of people around us. But in the context of being the most helpful and be, being of the greatest benefit to the world around us, I'm asking you to join me 
and let's make everything that we do, let's make it fun. Let's let joy, come on, let's let joy be a part. So specifically, let's have fun in our life groups. Let's have fun in our team huddles. Let's have fun as we sing and praise God. Let's have fun when we're driving our car and we got the music playing. Let's have fun in our friendship. No matter what age you are, no matter what your religious background, can you hear my heart today when I appeal to all of you? Let's make it fun. Thank you so much for joining us online. Here's what we would love for you to do. Click on the logo on your screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every week we're uploading our messages, bonus content, and even some videos that are guaranteed to make you laugh. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time.